to celebrate this thing called life. Specifically, the lives of Ian and Aaron as they are joined together today in marriage on the most beautiful campus in all of the country, continent, world, and universe. But admittedly, I may be a little biased. And speaking of the universe, I would like to place this very moment of time in perspective. In that blue-green marble hurtling through the infinite darkness of space, ever circling a beacon of light. This marble is Earth. Then, imagine the seven billion humans who live on this marble. Of these seven billion, 160 are here today to celebrate the joining of two of these human beings, Erin of House Hafes, the first of her name, and Ian of House Liar, the first of his name. Ian and Erin would like to take a moment of silent reflection to remember those family members who are no longer with us and whose presence is dearly missed. Dick Shea, Pat Lyer, June Martinson, Lois Hafes, Ann Rosano, Corey Hafes, and all of our ancestors whose lives have allowed us to be together for this celebration. Thank you. About four years ago, Aaron and Ian both worked at Joe Hafes' sunflower seed plant a couple of times a month, but for some reason initially never crossed paths. The first interaction was when Ian boldly decided to send her a tweet. The tweet read something like this. Missed you at the plant today, hashtag babe, hashtag trophy wife. <laughs> Good work, brother. The first time Ian and Aaron met face to face was at a Wisconsin lake cabin to celebrate the coming of the new year of 2013. Ian and Aaron bonded over mutual interests in hockey, nursing, and fine boxed wine while being pulled on a sled behind a truck on a lake, a typical northern Midwestern first date activity. This initial, uh, everyone can sit down. <laughs> was so strong that it prompted Ian to say, this just feels right, while they were sitting next to each other on the couch. And this didn't even freak Aaron out. Their bond continued to strengthen over shared values, similar music interests, and a mutual respect for the professional hockey player Brent Sobel. After many laughs, a couple years, and some tears, Aaron and Ian moved in together and shortly after got engaged. A year and a half of life and living later, they are now here in front of family and friends to profess their love for each other. Ian and Aaron have called upon the wisdom of their mothers to prepare the readings. Ask your Aunt Jody about that one. <laughs> ah, ask my 
Thomas or Philip that happened. And now for my part. Number five, live in the present moment. Take a breath and smile with all of your heart. Number six, love the life you live and live the life you love. Number seven, open your mind and open your heart. Everything you need to know is in there somewhere. And number eight, live a balanced life. Be the peace and harmony that you desire. You can't get it from anything or anyone else. May the sun bring you new happiness by day. May the moon softly restore you by night. May the rain wash away your worries and the breeze blow new strength into your being. And all the days of your life, may you walk together gently through the world and know it's true. Now back to Kingdom. Remember that little scene in the plastic cup? How the roots go down and the plant goes up? Nobody really knows why or how, but we're all like that. And so I want all of you to help me. And would you all now be that seed right now and help give Ian and Aaron a blessing from our hearts? And I'll show you. Set your program down. Hands up. Hands up. Bring your hands together to your heart. Set it here. Think of the most beautiful flower in the world. The flowers we're sending this morning, Sam. The most beautiful flower in the world. Got it? Take a breath in. And then send those roots right down into your heart. Right down into your heart for the roots. Take another breath in. And as that flower starts to blossom, we all that love out for you and Aaron. May you be filled with loving and kindness, may you be well, may you be peaceful and at ease, and may you be happy. Guitars, mandolins, banjos, ukuleles, kazoos, and voices all combined in various ensembles to create this music. Mike and Natalie Shea are the anchoring voices of these campfire gatherings and will now sing a song for all.
listening to love songs, and watching a sunset. But in all, in all seriousness, all of us up here today are honored to be standing in support of this dedicated and loving couple. Aaron and Ian, soon it will be time to exchange vows and to commit yourselves to one another in front of your friends and family. But for a moment, let's return to that earth marble hurtling through space. Thinking globally, each one of these seven billion humans on Earth has their own life, their own thoughts, desires, goals, motivations, what they live for. In a world as large as this, with this many people, what are the chances that any two can discover each other? Lucky for you all, I've taken the time to calculate this. There are seven billion people alive today. Of these, 2.1 billion are children, 560 million are older adults, so we'll just subtract these out of the equation. Then, when you subtract those that are already married out of the remaining total, this leaves 2.17 billion men and women that you could have potentially chosen, but you didn't. Pop culture is replete with depictions of the beginnings of love. In How I Met Your Mother, a love connection is defined by the German term Lebenschlanger Schicksalschatz, meaning lifelong treasure of destiny, which is described to be an instantaneous feeling that courses through you like a river after a storm. In the movie The Princess Bride, it is expressed in these three words, as you wish. The band The Doors proclaim that love can proceed even knowing your lover's name with, hello, I love you, won't you tell me your name? The notion of love at first sight is so prevalent in pop culture that all of the following movies, and more, have instances of this occurrence. Cinderella, West Side Story, The Godfather, Scarface, The Little Mermaid, Wally, The Notebook, Aladdin, Forrest Gump, Titanic, and even Dumb and Dumber when Lord Christmas falls instantly in love with Mary Swanson when she opens her front door. <laughs> Ian and Aaron have this instantaneous connection evident with their sentiment of this just feels right felt on their first day meeting each other. And while this notion is powerful, an immediate connection does not a successful marriage make. More than just a wedding. More than just the first fluttering feelings of love. More than a ring on the finger. In marriage, for each richer, there is a quarrel. For each sickness, there is good health. For each moment of happiness and bliss, there is a moment of sadness. Marriage transcends the highs and the lows that are inevitably encountered throughout life. Marriage in finding love is not an end point. Marriage is an ever unfolding arc of uncertainty. Today, you find yourselves leaping over the threshold together, filled with love and passion. Tomorrow will most likely be quite similar. What you're committing to today is beyond the immediate future. You're committing to the uncertain arc of the many years to come, and you're committing to the, to the decision that you want to spend the future in whatever it may bring with this person. There may be days that your connection to each other will waver, will falter, perhaps for no discernible reason. You may wake up sullen and cranky and degraded similarly. Other days, you may wake up giddy and filled with energy and be greeted solemnly. Ultimately, these variable feelings in the relationship will never fully stabilize. Your arc will continue to have peaks and valleys. The constant that transcends these highs and lows, these peaks and valleys, is love. This love does not arise, abide by, or dissolve in any connection with these daily feelings. Love becomes a structure in which you live. Every time that you open up, extend yourself, and step beyond your comfort zone with one another, this structure grows. The structure is supported by not only yourselves and your shared experiences, but by your family and friends who are present today and those who will be present in your future arc. The structure of love is what eclipses the highs and lows of life, what holds the bond together when opposing forces pull apart. Ian and Aaron, embrace the structure of love and know it will guide you through the arc of your marriage.
Everyone here today has been given a stone. These stones were meticulously collected from the tranquil waters of Lake Sybil. We all recognize that today is a very joyous and blessed occasion for Ian and Aaron. And I'd like to ask each of you to share your blessings right now by taking the stone into your hand and spend a few moments visualizing all of your positive thoughts and intentions for the couple, feeling the warmth and energy of your hand and heart transfer itself into the stone. On your way out of the ceremony today, please place your stone, now a stone full of positive energy and blessings for the couple, into the glass vase uh, at the back of the room. Ian and Aaron plan to use the Unity Stones to create a terrarium where your energy and blessings will nurture new plant life and create a peaceful oasis from which to reflect upon their wedding, marriage, love, and support of all their friends and family. Ian and Aaron, the time has nearly come to share your vows of marriage. But before we arrive at these momentous words, here are three wishes from me as your brother to you both. One, may you always communicate with and listen to each other. In marriage and in human life, most squabbles could have been solved by not just hearing, but truly listening to the other person. Two, may you always be silly. In the world caught up in seriousness and worry, a little bit of silly laughter goes a long way. Worrying is like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but it doesn't get you anywhere. And three, when times are tough, may you always remember that you are two of seven billion people in this world. Remember that you manage to find each other. And remember that you have every one of these well-wishers here today to support you in whatever way you might need. solidify you together as one. Aaron, we'll begin with you. Repeat after me. I vow to stand by your side in sickness and in health. I vow to stand by your side in sickness and in health. I promise to love you even when I hate you. I promise to love you even when I hate you. <laughs> I promise to love you more tomorrow than I do today and every day after. I promise to love you more today <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow. <laughs> and every day after. I vow to be yours and that's it forever. I vow to be yours and that's it forever. Now Ian, repeat after me. I vow to stand by your side in sickness and in health. I vow to stand by your side in sickness and in health. I promise to love you even when I hate you. I promise to love you even when I hate you. I promise to love you more tomorrow than I do today and every day after. I promise to love you <laughs> more tomorrow, more tomorrow <laughs> than, I do today. than I do today and every, and every day so after. <laughs> I vow to be yours and that's it forever. I vow to be yours and that's it forever. The wedding ring is an outward and visible sign of the inward and invisible bond that already unites you two in love. Jackie, can you please give the answer to Aaron? Aaron, do you take Ian to be your husband today, tomorrow, and every day after? If so, place the ring on Ian's finger and respond, I do. I do. Can you please give Ian's ring to Aaron? Yeah. Ian, do you take Aaron to be your wife today, tomorrow, and every day after? If so, place the ring on Aaron's finger and respond, I do. I do. May these rings forever remind you of your enduring love for each other. Seems to be only one thing left to do to complete the ceremony. So, by the great state of North Dakota, it is my honor and delight to declare you husband and wife. You may kiss each other.
cut. Immediately following the ceremony, the photographer will be taking pictures of the wedding party. After pictures and during dinner, you and Aaron will be greeting guests at your tables. Right now, please grab your belongings and we invite you to enjoy yourselves with snacks and refreshments, outside games, and the photo booth while the room is turned over for the reception. So, without further ado, I present to you the newest, hottest couple in town, Ian and Aaron. 